Hey guys, how you doing? This is Osamo here, and I got Paul. What's up, Paul? What's going on, brother? All right, man. Today is um, Thursday, the 15th of uh, 2011, uh, December 15th, 2011, and hope all you people are doing okay and uh, enjoying your Christmas and <clears throat> and all the um, hustle and bustle that's, that's happening with that, too, as well, so... Um, what you got, brother? I just like to start us out in prayer right now. Okay. I just before we get started, I don't know if anybody's feeling down, feeling lately in their own uh, lives that it's getting uh, that there's more warfare out there. Yeah. I know in my life, it, it just seems like there's more warfare, you know. And just re just be of good courage because whenever you have warfare like that, you must be doing something right. That's right. I, I know I know that when me my brother and myself, and we try to do the best for the Lord that we can. We get hit from all kinds of different areas in our lives, whether it be finances, whether it be uh, relationships, or whether it be whatever it is, it just comes, it seems like it comes against us in strong forms in different ways. And one of the things that I heard a while back that that was going to happen in the last days, and I don't know when the last days are, but it just seems like it is increasing. And I wonder if other people out there feel the same way. But one thing to, to remember, whenever I heard somebody say this, whenever it does those things start to happen to you like that, the, the evil one steps up a knock on you. But then the Lord turns around and steps up two notches on him. That's right. So just be that the Lord is there being, he's got your back. He's got your back. And uh, I know it's a, uh, I know it's real tough for a lot of people out there that are they're worried about their finances. And I just I just pray right now that, that the Lord would, would touch your lives and that he would he would pr provide uh, the, 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 uh, the needs that you, you need to have done in your life. And as I'm saying this to you right now, the Lord's giving me uh, a scripture. And uh, you may have to check this to yourself out. Even if you're not a Christian, get, just stick your, your head in that Bible and see what I'm talking about. It's Deuteronomy 1.11. And the Lord wants me to speak that out today in somebody's life. And uh, it's a good scripture. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. And the reason I'm not, because I want you to check it out yourself. And so I think you'll like the scripture. Amen. So, Father, I just pray for everybody out there for a financial situation. That, that they, you help them to, uh, first start out with their needs, Lord. And then if you have it in your heart to give them their wants, then give them what they want. What they want. But we just we just will ask you for your needs first, for our needs first. Father, we thank you for the clothes on our back, the food in our mouths, and the roof, and the roof over our heads. Those are the basics, Lord, and after that, we're back in a thousand. And I just thank you, Father, for, for doing those little simple things for us. They're simple to you, Lord, but they're like we, we just we start we start uh, we start freaking and we start. Uh, just having a fit and we can't meet those things in our lives. But Father, I just give you praise and glory for that. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Well, I'll let you people know um, uh, there were some, some earthquakes that happened um, yesterday. And I guess the biggest one was a 7.1 that happened in New Guinea. Uh, right off of uh, <clears throat> New Guinea is like, I believe it's uh, right off of... Um, Let's see here, right down here somewhere, there was a uh, earthquake just happened. Um, I'm Wait, sorry, I'm sorry, right, right down, uh, somewhere down here in New Guinea. That's uh, by our street. Yeah, down in, um, <clears throat> there was a 7.1 that happened. And then not only that, but, but also uh, there was, um, just nine hours ago, there was a earthquake down in... Um, the uh, Curses Island, and uh, that's where I was pointing out here near uh, uh, New Zealand. Actually, there was a couple of them that happened. So a 6.3, as we speak, <clears throat> just happened there. And then they had another eruption, uh, another earthquake here, a 5.6, uh, just about, uh, you know, about hours from me part, from each, you know, from each other there. So something's happening here in this, this area here. And then looking back here, you see all the big little dots. That's that's where all the uh, <clears throat> the bigger earthquakes that that are happening. As you see right here, 
Alaska, uh, 4.8, and then um, uh, near Japan, a 4.75, uh, 5.1 off of the same place where we had one in March. And then down here, uh, just right next to it, a 5.6. So Japan's hitting with three earthquakes in, uh, in about a couple hours from the park. And then Taiwan, this is a new one. Taiwan just happened here, uh, a 6.3, I mean, a 4.3, sorry. And uh, <clears throat> near Indonesia, uh, a, a 4.7 off of there as well. And then looking back here uh, uh, in our neck of the woods, um, let's see here, El Salvador had a 4.4, uh, 4.9, and then Colombia had a 4.3. Uh, Chile had a 4.3, Argentina and had an earthquake down here. So there's a lot of them popping up on the Ring of Fire uh, as we speak. And uh, here's the, uh, the global map of the uh, earthquakes here, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of them happening as we speak down here. Um, big ones here, this is the one in New Guinea, I believe, right up to here and stuff. So um, nothing's changed, but a lot of earthquakes are happening, definitely. So we need to take a look at that. Um, but uh, here's, here's the map of today. Um, Japan, 5.6, uh, 6.3, and then Curse Island, and uh, 7.1, which is the biggest one here in New Guinea. Um, so a lot of rattling and rolling happening in this uh, winter season, that's for sure. Uh, what you got, brother? Well, I think the next clip we had was had to be with, uh, was it a gas cloud in the Milky Way? Yeah, yeah, you had uh, an extra um, interesting article here on the gas, gas cloud here. Milky Way's black hole. Yeah, yeah. So, so not only that we have our earthquakes here happening here, but then there's things are happening in the heavenlies. That's for sure. That's right. And, uh, we actually have a video on that, but you have the article that you want to explain a little bit on. Yeah, that? to start out, maybe you can just show the first part where it shows the uh, that sphere and it shows the glass gas cloud going through it. Yeah, this is it right here. Yeah. Right? Okay, this is the massive black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy is destined to be invaded by a glass cloud, creating a violent encounter, according to astronomers. The supermassive black hole in the Milky Way is close enough for astronomers to study in detail. So the encounter could, could provide a unique chance for scientists to observe what until now has only been theorized. The, the astronomers plan to find out a black hole eats up gas, dust, and stars as it grows even bigger. And it goes further on, it says, the next two years will be very interesting and should provide us with extremely valuable information on the behavior of matter around such massive objects and its ultimate fate. Uh, it says, is, is not to, uh, it says uh, the scientists say that by 2013, outbursts of X-rays and radio waves will be emitted as the cloud gets hotter and hotter and is obliterated by the black hole. The cloud is mostly made up of hydrogen and helium gas. So if we can go to that next, uh, that next clip, we can show them what's going on there. Okay. Here's a here's an actual video of uh, there's there's a couple parts to it, but we'll. Uh, due to time, uh, we're going to show a couple of them here for you, see what's happening here. Not long ago, actually watching something being ripped apart as it falls towards a giant black hole would be science fiction. But this is becoming reality for astronomers using ESA's very large telescope. We will see how science fiction has turned into science fact as astronomers observe the progressive destruction of a cloud of gas that's being pulled in by a supermassive black hole. ESO telescopes have been used to track the motion of stars around the giant black hole at the center of our galaxy for 20 years. Oh, it's this excellent. black hole's mass is a hefty 4 million times that of the sun, earning it the title wow. of supermassive black hole. Although it is huge, this black hole is currently supplied with little material and is not shining brightly, but this is about to change. 
Using ESO's very large telescope, a team of astronomers have discovered a new object that is heading almost straight towards a black hole at vertiginous speed. The object is not a star, but a cloud of gas. The cloud consists mainly of hydrogen gas, gas which we see anyhow in the galactic center all over the place. This particular cloud weighs more or less three times the mass of Earth, so it's a rather small and tiny blob only, but it glows very brightly in the uh, light of uh, the stars which are surrounding the cloud. As the astronomers watched, the cloud has been picking up pace as it gets closer to the giant black hole. Its speed has doubled in the last seven years, and it is now speeding towards the black hole at more than 8 million kilometers per hour. The astronomers have already seen the cloud's outer layers becoming more and more disrupted over the last few years as it approaches the black hole. And that's, but the, that's the uh, gas right there that's heading toward the black hole. The black hole, yeah, I imagine yeah. it's sitting here, has a tremendous gravitational force of the cloud. Yeah, it's a as fireball. It comes in, it will be elongated and stretched. It will become essentially like spaghetti. It will be elongated and falling into the black hole. Now, well, now we, we've we've got an actual uh, another yeah, video that shows the, uh, the 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 uh, the black hole, um, the actually the fire, and here here it is. It's pretty cool. And that's what it looks looks like as it's going in there. Pretty pretty awesome. Wow. Um, It's amazing, brother, that there's a there's there is such thing as a black hole in space, you know, and you kind of wonder if um you know if this thing actually um uh, <clears throat> you know could be like you know how the Bible talks about us going into the heaven and um you know we disappearing up there and and um in the sky you know into the next uh. What do you call it? The next level, you know, when we all die, and you wonder about that, you know, because we still don't know fully what's going on, you know, beyond that. What I'm saying is beyond that black hole. That's what I'm saying. And they're mm. saying that these things are kind of going in there and going right into the black hole there. And uh, did they say what the fireball was, or or? Um, well, it's supposed to be a gas cloud. A gas cloud. Yeah, it's um, a gas cloud going through the Milky Way. Wow. Well, Wow. That's hydrogen. I think it's made of hydrogen, and I think I said what it was. I'm not sure if it yeah. is not. The hydrogen gas, and uh, I'm not quite sure if it was. Hydrogen gas is something else. Yeah. Good for you, real quick. Here. Yeah. Well, that's still pretty yeah, interesting. So I think that's pretty wild to have something like that, that, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think so. Um. um I'm trying to get this thing up and see exactly what it says. Uh -oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says this unprecedented opportunity to obtain unique observation inside of a process that goes on as the gas falls back into a black hole, heats up, and emits light. It's a, it's a neat window on a black hole that's actually capturing gas as it spirals in. Hmm. I think it could be like an angel fire, too, maybe, huh? Going into that. Well, it's huh? definitely gas, <laughs> hydrogen gas. Yeah. And it was something else. I forgot what else it was. And I, I, I'm not I'm trying to see if I can find it in here. Well, you know, you, wonder, you, wonder, about, you wonder about that black hole, too. Could it be where... where heaven is you know in that galaxy or you know maybe that's where they're coming out of that portal you know the portal I, my personal thought is that I, I think uh, this little thing that we're seeing is just in god's eyes it's like a little tiny tiny piece of sand uh, uh, like a little tiny particle of sand yeah that's true it's one of them this yeah. is nothing <laughs> yeah that's true that's just, true i mean that's just what i feel i just, yeah i think you look that just go, that's just like a little particle of sand. Yeah, you know I mean? that's true. And then, you know, Revelation, so, I know Rev I read Revelation before where it says that he's going to roll up the sky 
like a like a <clears throat> like a carpet, mm-hmm. you know, rolling it up. So we're gonna see mm-hmm. everything. So uh, uh, it's just kind of neat on that. Um, what's happening on that in the universe? So what else you got, my brother? Well, I think that's about it. That's about it. I just wanted to get people that let people show what was going on there. I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, just to yeah, definitely. See what the was about in that big old fiery flame flying yeah. right through that Milky Way. Amen. Amen. That's different. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, like going back to what we had talked, this is going back to what we were talking about when I first started praying over people. Don't be discouraged. I know, you know, there, there's a lot of things that evil one is going to try to do to come against you in different ways. And I know he's tried to do it to me, and I know he's done it to my brother. But just hang in there, you know, people. Don't, don't you know, just hang in there. It's all right to be uh, human and, and, and have feelings and, and be, be down and stuff, you know. The Lord understands that, you know, and yeah. that's what's beautiful about our Lord, that he's able to understand stuff like that. Yeah. But one, one thing I noticed that's so beautiful about our Lord We'll go through it through that whole night time and and be really discouraged and you you feel like just leaving and just you know leave your friends and leave everything and just move on from everybody. And but you know it's so neat for the Lord when that morning comes. You have joy in the morning. Yeah. And it's so cool to know that the Lord is there for us that He's That's there right. to pick us up, dust us off, and says, "Okay, my child, get up and start all over again." That's right. And that's all you have to do, people. You go ahead and feel the way you do. Go ahead and mourn or do what you need to do. When you get up in the morning, you just keep trusting. And he'll duck you off the next morning and send you on your way. And you'll have a little joy in your heart. Amen. And you'll make it through that day. You'll make it through that day. That's and you'll right. make it because he loves you so much. He hurts when you hurt. He sees your pain. Nobody else sees your pain, but he sees it. He understands it. He knew it before you were even born. Mm. He knew what you'd be going through. You know, I was walking today with the Lord like I normally do, and, and I, I one of the things I said, well, Lord, this it was so painful, it was so painful, it was so painful. I kept telling him over and over, and he stopped me after the third time I said painful. He says, well, how do you think it felt with my son when he died for you on the cross? Do you want to be like him? Well, yeah, Lord, but well, you're experiencing the same pain in a different way. So it's good to walk through that pain. Because you become a lot like Christ. So it's okay to have those feelings. It's okay to feel down. It's okay to feel happy. It's okay to have all those things that go on in your heart and in your, and in your mind. Just don't dwell on them for so long that it just drags you down. Because the Lord understands all those things. Jesus understands it because he went through every one of them. He was rejected. He pleaded to his father, please don't let me don't let me die on that cross. If you can make this pass for me, please do it. But one more, one, one more beautiful thing about Christ that I couldn't do like Christ could do. He says, no, not my will, Father, but your will. I think we need to grab a page from that, from Amen. Christ. Do that lives. Amen. And it's hard, but if you can't do it, he'll bless you for it. Hmm. Definitely, 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 definitely. I know, I know. Christmas time in the winter time, it's it's really hard for for those who <clears throat> who have family, especially uh, those who are are, are widows or or uh, you know single, and and you have kids or a father with kids and no wife or 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 a wife without a husband and two kids, you know, uh, vice versa and. You know, maybe some of you own a home, you know, also it's it's tax season, it's it's property tax and stuff. And then you got, you know, your your presents that you need to give to your kids and stuff. And some people are uh, out of work. And, um, <clears throat> you know, brother, I forgot to mention also that, you know, I saw a article that says that uh, in the state of Washington, there was a... Uh, I guess uh, a lot of people without health insurance mm, mm, and, and mm. that's due because they can't afford health insurance. And, and I know there's a lot of businesses out there that can't, can't afford health insurance, you know, cause it's too expensive, you know, hey, bro, I can understand that. That's where I'm at right now. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm there. I'm there too, brother. I'm there. You know, it's called the grace of God. 
it's by the grace of God that, it, that, we're, that we're both able to be healthy like we are. That's right. And we don't used to be that way, but it's just, I don't know if anybody's tried to check out what it costs for premiums. Yeah. A month for a year. It's just, it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's right. And it's, it, it, to me, it seems like, brother, check me if I'm wrong, but it seems like, to me, it seems like the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Yeah, it does seem that way. And I don't mean to be disrespectful to anybody, but it just seems that way. And, you know, I don't know. I just, that's a tough one. I mean, I yeah. see a lot of people on the streets walking and, you know, they're asking for food, they're asking for money. I just see such an increase on corners of, of homeless people all over this world. I mean, just in the, just in Orange County itself, I noticed all kinds. I mean, this is my, you know, I, I grew up in Northern California, and I used to see that kind of all the time. You'd see homeless people, but I never thought I'd see it here. Mm. So much prosperity out here, mm. and there's it's ramp. And now you look at it, on every corner, there's somebody standing there asking for alms, like the poor people are yeah. asking, you know, and they have to just just to to, put, to feed their their kids for the day. That's right. That's We're not, right. The, just for the day. Wow. Yeah, it's it's definitely happening. It's definitely happening. You know, um, you know, there's there's no uh, such thing as a middle class anymore. That's for sure. And um, you know, um, you know, I just I just think of uh, all these people who are struggling and and don't have jobs or or they're trying to get jobs and and uh, you know they're they're taking, you know, small jobs just to pay, you know, to get health insurance as well. But um, reading about um, a lot of states and a lot of uh, <clears throat> people who don't have that kind of health insurance, you know, and uh, that's, that's the reality. So, Go ahead, brother. And that's why it's so important for us to have a community. Get together, get some friends together, start getting something together where you can get organized. You can take it, somebody can bring things different, people can bring different things into some kind of community to help one each other out. Because if, it, if the expression of the so-so so hits the fan, you know, where are you going to be? Where are you going to be if you don't have somebody to depend on? That's right. You can't do it alone. You cannot do it alone. Mm. You're going to need something that somebody else has and if you don't get together as a community or get people together to help each other out, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're going to see people going into homes taking things mm. by force. Oh. And this is why we need to get together as communities to help one, to help each other out. If we don't do that, you're going to see people going into rich people's homes and taking what they want. Mm. It's all happening. That's right. That's right. Just read the news. That's right. Read it over in Northern California or read it over in Nevada or read it over, over across the world. It's happening. People are, they're, they're rioting. That's right. They're upset. They don't have. Mm. And it's not going to get any better. I'm not trying to be mean or doomsday or anything. It's just the truth. Yeah. Well, if you choose to put your head in the sand, that's up to you. But like, like me and my brother were talking, we're, we're talking about getting people together so we can have something together where we can count on each other. Because if we can't do that, I'm talking about in times when times are tough. Not when you have to do a little thing like this or that. I'm talking when the, when the so-called hits the fan. Yeah. That you, your brother, my brother would go to me and go, hey, man, I need some help here. And we both reciprocate to each other because we know how, how important that is. But you need to get in your communities and do that, too. You know, I I think about brother, you know, like um, talking to somebody who uh, who been in the... Uh, uh, the World War Two, you know, and uh, you know who that person is. Uh, um, um, she's uh, from Switzerland, and and uh, she talked about how, you know, her family or her mom had to actually, you know, they they had a all kind of like s several families living together, kind of thing, you know. 
and uh, <clears throat> you know you're talking about your um, things taken away and because of the war and stuff you know um, you know one thing for sure is that uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of a uh, lot of crimes that are happening uh, a lot of theft that's happening and that's what happens when you when you have famine you have famine you have uh, a lot of crimes that are happening you know and that's what my brother's saying is that you know you, you need a community uh, to get together you have to have friends that support groups I would call it you know um, people that you trust and, and maybe have that you pull together in case of emergencies like that you know where you can uh, help each other as far as resources and stuff and I think it's an, um, definitely an important time for that. Um, you know, um, if, if you can't fight it in your church that, that does something like that, go find a church that, that will, you know. That's right. Um, it, it, it's important to just uh, kind of interject real quick. Yeah, go ahead, brother. you got to find a church where you see the church being active. Hmm. Being active and helping the community out. Getting something going. Uh, whether it be giving food out or, or whatever. We have a, a, a wonderful church that my brother and I attend, and they do that. They have a, a warehouse, and, and they help out people, you know, they, and they send them on their way. They try to do the best they can with what they have, and, you know, they're dependent on, on people giving, and that's and they just give it out. They don't ask anything in return. They just give it out. But we need to do that as a community. As, as individuals, we need to start doing that. Because if we don't do that, we're going to see this crime increase. Hmm. Sorry, brother. No, go ahead, brother. I just want to point out also that we are, uh, me and my brother are working on on our website, but <clears throat> we, we want to um, put up uh, resources for, for you people out there, um, you know, transistor radios, uh, uh, things sure. that that you can actually you know be protected in this time, so we are working on that. Uh, right now we're we're uh, trying to do that because of budget, and um, you know if you can help us out any donation, I would preach it, preach it. You know that'd be helpful too. But we are we have a vision that where we we're trying to do something like that. We have a mercy warehouse in case of emergency, what to do, plans to do things you need like as far as like uh dry foods and uh you know maybe transistor radios uh s solar things you know without using batteries and stuff so we are working on something that we're trying to do but uh but i think it's important for what you should do is definitely have have a, a support group have a group where you can uh um know that that you can deal with people that you trust and and in case of places, you know, you know, they said, you know, brother, I read something that they say that um, it's good to have. Um, uh, and now this is from a guy. Uh, um, I think his name is Michael Pearl, but he was a, uh, I guess, a very business type person. And he he left that whole corporate thing and, and moved into a, like an Amish community. Mm. So he knows how to live off the land. But he says is is to have your passports ready, and he says to have a radius place where you can basically escape, you know, in case of an emergency and stuff like that. Um, you know, that's kind of going overboard. But I mean, uh, you know, that might not be a, that might not be a stupid thing to do. You know? Oh, that's yeah. a good idea. Man. Yeah. I don't think it's going overboard. You don't. You never know what's going to happen. That's right. That's and, right. You know, even if you can't, you know, when I'm saying this, when I say get people together, I'm not talking about fifty or hundred people. I'm talking just a core group. Yeah. Like let's say or seven people. Yeah. Then start that way, and then maybe the friends that you said that, that they're in that core group can tell some other friends, and then they could get themselves going. Yeah. And get another core group going. So you have all the six or seven friends that you have, and then you have a friend that goes out and starts another six or seven people, and then they take one person from that group, starts out another six or seven, and keeps on going, keeps on multiplying. That's right. That's right. We're helping each other out. That's right. That's right. You know, that's what I'm thinking, brother. Like, um, you know, when we look at um, the...
the huge uh, mega churches, you know, like um, the <clears throat> Crystal Cathedral, you know, um, going under now. They just broke apart. Yeah, they just broke apart. Yeah. And they were huge. They were, yeah. And I think they, they had a lot of butts rolling into that church. Yeah. I think all the celebrities used to go to that church. Yeah. And now they had they, they went bankrupt. Mm. They had to sell everything. That's right. That's right. I think pretty soon, you know, we look at home churches and stuff, you know, and, and not, I'm not prophesying this stuff and, and telling, but. That's, I think that's the future. Yeah. I really do. I really do. Mm. I think that's what the Lord is moving. That's where he's moving. Yeah. It's, it's not to put down the big churches or anything. It's just we the big churches aren't going to be able to take care of everybody else. Mm. And the Lord knows this. And that's why he's splintering out different home groups the way yeah, he's doing. That's right. I mean, that we attend, they're doing that because mm. they know they're able to take care of everything. That's so right. So they depend on others to go out and splinter out. Yeah, that's right. And that's the way to do it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I don't know about the, you know, the big churches and, and stuff and, and people not knowing each other and I've been in big churches before. I've been in churches where you don't know where your next seat would be because uh, you don't know who your neighbor would be. You know, um, I think uh, <clears throat> you need to know who your neighbor is. You knew you need to know people who who your core groups again. You know, on that because you know we're moving into a time as as 2011 closes, 2012 hits, and uh, you know more earthquakes are going to erupt, more volcanoes, more famine more more of these things are happening you know we look at israel we look at the things that are happening you know we even even talked up israel today just to you know what's what's happening but i mean as my brother says you can't put your head in the sand and, and hoping things will go okay you know we can pray yes we can definitely pray but we need to get prepared and we need to know uh uh what to do definitely well on that note, brother, since you brought them up, the Lord put me up, put this on my heart. We're to pray for Israel right now. That's right. That's so, right. I just lift up Israel to you yes. right now, Father. I ask that you protect their borders. Yes, I ask Lord. that you protect the old, the widowed, the yes. orphan, the poor. Father, I ask that you just cover all the people that are in Israel right now. Yes. I'd ask that you bless them, Lord. I ask yes. that you bless their crops, their water, yes, their air, their trees. Their, whatever they have, they touch their hands to, Lord. I ask that you bless. I bless that you. I, I ask that you bless the underneath their feet, the ground that they walk on, Lord. I ask that you bless anything that has to do with Israel that would help them make themselves better. I ask that you just bless them and bless them and bless them, Lord, mm -hmm. and that you keep them close to your heart because I know yes. they're the apple of your eye, Lord. Yes. So I ask that you bless Israel and you protect them and you guide them and that you hurt their when they're sad and, and that you comfort them, Lord. And, and then when they're hurting for their money, they need to pay their mortgage and they need to pay their bills. I ask that you provide for them, that you would bless them in that area, Lord. Yes, Lord. I ask that you bless Israel from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, yes. that you take care of the people that are sick, Lord, the people who have all kinds of uh, cancer and yes, kind, of, kind of ailments that would, 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 might affect them or hurt them in any way. Or make them feel terrible. Lord. I ask that you just bless them, Lord, and make them whole again. Restor restoration, restoration, restoration of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. On well, that, well, I think it's about time we take off. Yeah. So, we just bless, bless you. Bless you. We bless, we bless you. you. We bless, bless you. you. God bless you, people. Lord bless you, guys.